Hey, it's Benji Cole, son of Al Cole from CBS Radio and host of People of Distinction. The talk that gives an in-depth view of some of the most dynamic, intelligent, and successful people on the planet. Run to our website, peopleofdistinction.org, for more info. Or you can always email me directly at benji at alcoholenterprises.com. And on the line with us today, we have Patrick Earl Dwyer. We're going to be discussing his amazing book, Ascendancy. It's available for purchase through Amazon, Barnes & Noble, pretty much wherever books are sold. But people, if you want to gather everything that Patrick has in store, do yourself a favor and head directly to his personal site. And that's PatrickEarlDwyerAuthor.com. There you'll find more information on Patrick himself, more information on this fantastic narrative, as well as find the hyperlinks set up to take you to the purchasing page. So one more time, that's PatrickEarlDwyerAuthor.com. You know, and I will say, Patrick was brought to our network, People of Distinction, today by some of the best publishers in the business, Author Reputation Press. So if you or anyone you know have a book that they'd like moved, give yourself the best gift you could possibly give. Contact ARP and have their fantastic team move it for you. You can find out more information on them at AuthorReputationPress.com. And listen, people, it is an absolute pleasure to have Patrick here on the line. Now, the moment you go to his Amazon, Barnes & Noble pages, PatrickEarlDwyerAuthor.com, you start to do any research on his book, Ascendancy, well, you're going to have an idea of what we're discussing today. Now, I'm saying an idea because people, listen, we're only going to scratch the surface. Now, by the time we're done with today's discussion, I promise you, you're going to run on over to the purchasing pages and you're going to pick up your coffee because it is that impactful. Now, I want to start off by saying it is a historical fiction. OK, so first and foremost, you got that fictional side. So, you know, some of it was created and embellished for entertainment purposes. But people, this is based in history. OK, it's based on true events. And there's usually something that happens whenever, or at least for me, whenever I'm watching a movie, reading a book, whatever the case may be. And the story that I'm engaged in is steeped in reality. There's just something that raises the stakes about that. There's something that is absolutely, it's just, it's, it's, it's so much more engaging knowing that this actually happened, right? And people, the underlying message is something that we absolutely love to discuss here through people of distinction. And you all have heard me mention this on a number of occasions. We truly believe that there's more that connects us than separates us. And when I say us, I'm talking about the global us. I'm talking about the human family in its entirety. Not just here in the States, not in other countries. We're talking about the entire world. And we really do mean that here through people of distinction, right? I mean, again, we talk about it all the time. And this book is right up that alley, okay? It's a story that reveals some of the common occurrences among migrating peoples right migrating communities past and present and again there are a lot more things that connect us than separate us and there's a lot of similarities between it and at the end of the day patrick is the expert <laughs> he's written the book he's done the research and he's going to be able to articulate it much better than i ever could so let's bring him here with us patrick first and foremost man welcome to people of distinction and thank you very much for being a oh, guest. Thanks, Liz. Thank you, Benji Cole. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Of course, absolutely. I Listen. love your. Uh, I love your build up. It's perfect. <laughs> I appreciate because it, Patrick. Because we all, we, yeah, we all have a lot in common. And mm -hmm. uh, this is a, this is a novel, ascendancy, that's for fans of history, heritage, and family drama. It's full of action and romance. I've fictionalized some of the real characters, know who they are, where they end up, where they came from and where they end up. And I'm really pleased with the way it's turned out. Absolutely. Uh, it is the true life saga of two Irish families. Uh, the story begins in Dublin, Ireland in 1779. And the story ends in New Orleans in 1832. Uh, it has a very wide scope. There are events uh, that happen in the book, heritage and history events, 
that occur in Australia, Jamaica, Mexico, and of course, Ireland and America. It is a story, is an ancient story of a struggle against tyranny and oppression, basically, mm. and how normal people and families overcome adversity to find their peace and prosperity, particularly in America, because that's what's emphasized. So it describes a growing America in its early, in its early days, just after the American Revolution. Uh, again, Ireland responded with a revolt of its own against its English overlords. That's in the beginning of the book. Uh, this is about the time the French Revolution began. So there are a lot of common threads uh, as to the motives behind uh, the struggle in Ireland. Uh, my ancestors were there. I document that. Um, and I have fun with it. I create some romance, and there's lots of action, some of it true, some of it very tragic. But also there's a lot of triumph. Uh, over this tragedy throughout the book. Uh, eventually, my ancestors end up in America. Uh, one batch, <clears throat> the Scotch-Irish side, the McGoffins end up in Kentucky and are, and are part of the development and growth of the Ohio River Valley. Uh, the Dwyer side comes through Jamaica. They, they are sent there as indentured servants. They live among the plantation slaves in Jamaica at the time and participate in the emancipation of those slaves. Uh, the Baptist War occurred at that time. And then from there, the Dwyers head to New Orleans and eventually to Texas. And that's where part two begins. So I've written part two, the sequel. It'll come out this coming year. I'm naming it Butterfield Road. In the meantime, Ascendancy um, is getting some attention. I'm very pleased with the reviews. It's exciting. Fantastic. You know, Patrick, thank you very much for sharing. Now, I want to take a step back a little bit. Let's talk about inspiration for a second here. Really, where does the... Well, two-part question, I well, guess, you know, when we're talking about inspiration. It, yeah, it all, it all starts. It all starts in my youth. My, I, I was aware and primed by my father, first of all, about our heritage story and the con contributions that my ancestors, my Irish and Scotch-Irish ancestors, made. Who they married? They did end up marrying Canary Islanders, uh, Spanish great grandmothers. Uh, for both, and then eventually they're going to intermarry. But anyway, they were part of the Texas independence story, and they were there when America expanded westward. I've already described the Ohio River Valley expansion of the early pioneers, but they were also there for the expansion of America west to the Pacific during the Mexican-American War. So they're part of Texas independence and the expansion westward to the Pacific. Interestingly, uh, some of my first friends and readers, uh, they all related to it. They said, hey, my ancestors were there with yours here and there in the book. The bottom line is uh, I was told in my youth, or, or I was asked in my youth to write the story, but I didn't take it seriously then. In my adult life, as a medical doctor, I was greatly impressed and entertained by heritage stories from my patients. Um, I served in an emergency room capacity all over the Southwest and as a generalist. And I shared the heritage stories with people from all over the world in the Southwest area of the country, New Mexico, Arizona, West Texas, Nevada. And so that was intriguing. And it made me think about my request as a youth to write the story. Then I had a daughter recently 
who wanted to know more about her grandfather's side, my father's side. And I responded to her that, you know, I'm going to have to write the story. I'm going to have to write the book. So I did. Here we are. People, again, we're here on the line with Patrick Earl Dwyer. We're discussing his amazing book, Ascendancy, available for purchase through Amazon, Barnes & Noble, pretty much wherever books are sold. But for a one-stop shop of everything he has in store, check out his personal site, PatrickEarlDwyerAuthor.com. You know, Patrick, next question that I want to go into, because you started to talk about a sequel uh, to this book that you're uh, in the process of writing, or actually just at the completion of writing, set to be published very, very shortly. Well, we don't want to give too much information away, but I would love to hear a little bit more about it. Please give us a brief description of the sequel. Well, in part one, we're going to end up in New Orleans. Uh, The Dwyer side is in New Orleans. The Kentucky McGoffin side of the family is grown, and one of the uh, adult children from the McGoffin side comes down through New Orleans, runs into the Dwyers. They happen to remember uh, running a uh, crossing pass in Ireland. This McGoffin youngster, he heads to Mexico to do his business. Very entrepreneurial. Uh, it's great stuff. It's uh, how they How they created their wealth and their prosperity is just remarkable uh, what these pioneer heritage ancestors did. And so we're all, you know, kind of related in that way. We're all here to create peace and prosperity for ourselves and for our families. And so it ends up with the McGoffin, the younger McGoffin uh, in Mexico. He's in fact a consular general to Mexico uh, at Saltillo. And the Dwyers are in New Orleans and they have an opportunity to settle in Texas. And Texas at the time is a Mexican state. Mexico owns everything west of the Mississippi River, practically. Now the Louisiana Purchase did, you know, swing uh, a little bit northwest, but all of the western part of the country was owned by Mexico. It was under Mexican sovereignty. And my ancestors, the Dwyer side, they had a chance for an opportunity to settle Texas. Mexico wanted to settle Texas in order to stay in control of Texas. Uh, They wouldn't, they they were having trouble um, consolidating their their laws, their customs in Texas, and they wanted to bring people in. And so they offered land inexpensively. And that's where the Dwyers started in Texas. And from there, all I can tell you is they were very entrepreneurial. They ended up in another battle for independence. And uh, the McGoffin side, he ends up founding uh, what is now El Paso, Texas. But before he did, he he helped uh, then President Polk um, siege the garrison at Santa Fe, New Mexico, which allowed troops, American troops, to head west to California to secure California. So basically, uh, my ancestors were there for this. American expansion process, both in Texas and then west, all the way to California. And it's kind of exciting uh, to be able to share that, uh, to describe it. And uh, so I I did romanticize it. I certainly uh, created some action and romance within the story itself. But I do describe historical battles in the Mexican-American War and the Texas War for Independence in part two. So I'm thrilled with the results. It's a, it's a history heritage book with lots of family drama. And uh, I'm real pleased with part two as much as I am with part one. Uh, Benji, I think what's, what's happened is I've found my artistic expression. Uh, I can't paint or I never tried really. I can't sculpt. No draw. I don't make a lot of music, 
or, or very well anyway, but I seem to have found my niche. Um, being able to paint a picture with words, I seem to be pretty good at it. So I'm hoping to continue. Absolutely. Well, listen, we hope. Again, thanks for having me. Of course. Patrick, yeah, listen, we hope that you continue as well because this is fantastic and we are here for it. Last couple of questions here as we start to close out. Patrick, curiosity for myself, man, what would you say was a highlight for you in writing the book? Or if not a highlight, something that surprised you that you weren't anticipating before you began? You know, I think it's I think it's my ability to bring the characters to life. That was one of the first uh, responses I got from early readers, like my brother, um, to be able to share uh, normal human emotions, um, romance, the love, the um, just the normal family things that go on in all of our lives. Uh, I just felt good about the description. Mm -hmm. uh, there are several romantic threads and several families that are woven through this story. Um, and I'm glad uh, it turned out the way it did. It, uh, it's, uh, I wondered, I wondered if it would turn out as well as it did uh, because I went back and forth. There's things going on here and there, and I have to uh, coordinate that with the timeline connect the dots, uh, and uh, connect the people. So I'm pleased with the overall uh, result. I think it's the big takeaway for me mm -hmm. is it's normal human relations. It's a story about normal families finding their way. Um, and we're still doing it today. In a great place, mm -hmm. America. Patrick, closing yeah. out here, I love having this platform to, to be able to pay it forward, in a sense, whenever there are opportunities that present themselves. And you are someone that has been through the process. You've written your own narrative. You've gotten it published. You have another one on the horizon and hopefully many more to come after that. So I'd love to take this opportunity. Of course, man, absolutely. Well, I'd love to take this opportunity, Patrick, for any new writers out there listening in right now. What are some words of wisdom that you can relate to them about the journey they're getting ready to take? I would say get organized. Think about your story, um, how you want to move it in a timeline. Um, uh, I think organization and research is key. Um, I think you had to have, you have, have, have to have a pretty good idea. And it was easy for me because I knew where people ended up on a timeline. So yeah, connect the dots. Yeah. I don't know there any other way to say it. Just uh, <laughs> outline your story. I prefer to outline some just get in there and go at it. I know that everybody's got their own way of doing things. Of course. But once I'm organized, and I think a lot of writers will agree, uh, you know your story, now go with it. and Just go with the flow. Um, let your mind uh, carry you. Let your thoughts, your mind carry you. Let your emotions, you know, act, act, accentuate what you got in front of you. About it. I, I, I think organization and... and uh, having an open mind, letting your thoughts take you where you want to go. I love that Good advice. Truly valuable. People, I'm going to say it for you once again. I know I don't have to. I know the majority of you are already there. For everybody else, I don't really know what's going on. Pinch yourself. You must be asleep. We're here on the line with Patrick Earl Dwyer. We just finished discussing his amazing book, Ascendancy, and it's available for purchase through Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Target, pretty much wherever books are sold but check out PatrickEarlDwyerAuthor.com for everything that he has in store. For the sequel to the book, for hopefully the many more on the horizon to come in the future, you surely will not be disappointed. This is a wonderful book that needs to be on your shelf. It's a better gift to even put on someone else's. 
Head on over there today and pick up your copies. Patrick, this has been an absolute pleasure. Such an honor. Thank you once again for being a guest on People of Distinction. Hey, I had fun. Let's do this again. Thanks for having me, Ben. God bless.